right. Okay, here we go. This is the opening of our 156th special communication of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia, June 5th, 2021. <clears throat> Waiving all due signs and ceremonies, I now declare this 156th com special communication of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia open in ample form. I will give my address. Most worshipful brethren, right worshipful brethren, very worshipful brethren, worshipful brethren, brothers all. This is and has been for more than 15 months or more a very unusual time for the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. Unprecedented in our history, we can say, we have learned to live with isolation, communication with Zoom and Skype, to wear masks and to shop warily. We badly miss our lodges and our ability to meet as brothers within them. Before I go any further, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. For the unwavering support that I have received from you all during these stressful times and extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for your support. The virus is still with us, but every day it is diminishing thanks to the incredible efforts of our dedicated medical workers of every level and the vaccines that they have developed. <clears throat> and available to all of us. And we draw closer to the time when we can safely reopen our lodges to each and every single one of you, that they can not come soon enough. Knowing that we could not meet in Truro again this year, in time-honored fashion, we had hoped to have a smaller bare bone ceremony in Freemasons Hall here in Halifax. And accordingly, had the ro lodge room set up to accommodate the government regulations of the time on indoor gatherings. And I thank the brothers of Keep 17 for their efforts in doing so. The so-called third wave took care of that. So here we are, thanks to Zoom, taking care of business electronically one for the history books. When I started this journey the second time around as junior grand warden, <clears throat> certainly did not know that I would finish it as the grand master of Masons in Nova Scotia in a COVID ridden time with all of the stressfulness and heartache of lost loved ones and ruined small businesses. But I believe that the spirit is strong in all of us and we will recover and be tougher and stronger for the experience. To our dedicated, <clears throat> Grand Lodge office staff, Right Worshipful Brother B. Baxter, Grand Secretary, Grand Treasurer, Office Administrator, Pat Richards, Office Secretary, Sonia Beeler. I give thanks to you from all of us. We are in good hands. To the incoming Grand Master and the well-chosen members of his administration, I pledge my support 100%. I promise that I will be available for any task that you wish me to do. 
over the course of the last couple of years, <clears throat> so many of you, the Masonic Brethren of Nova Scotia, have given me support, advice, and brotherly love and affection. And I thank you deeply for your dedication to the craft. You are too numerous to mention by name, but there is a very deserving handful that I will. I want to thank past Grandmaster Jim Luddington, Deputy Grandmaster, Right Worshipful Brother, John Dollymont. Senior Grand Warden, Right Worshipful Brother, Alan Jarvis. Junior Grand Warden, Right Worshipful Brother, Bob Cowie. Grand Treasurer for 36 years, Most Worshipful Brother, Harold Crosby. Grand Secretary, Right Worshipful Brother, B. Batchelor and Chairman of the Board of General Purpose, Right Worshipful Brother, Frank Gamble, for their dedication to the craft and for their aid and assistance during my tenure as Grand Master. My very good friend and brother, most worshipful brother, Jim Luddington. I thank you deeply for everything. I could call on you at any time and you would be there with timely advice and wisdom. You smoothed the path <clears throat> for me, my brother. To the Grand Secretary, Right Worshipful Brother B. Bachelor, when you took on the office more than a year ago, and this pandemic hit, and we had to close the office, I said to myself, this is a good time for him to take over. There will be very little going on. I was wrong. He was and is still very busy with phone calls and keeping everyone informed with what is going on with his staff either working from home at times or just unable to come into the office because of the pandemic measures. You have handled things like a pro and have kept me closely informed on happening, happenings and we have developed a close friendship over that time. I will always be there for you. To my Grand Director of Ceremonies, Right Worshipful Brother Quentin Hardy, a true and faithful brother, dedicated to the fraternity and the concordant bodies he is involved in. But mostly to the role as Grand Director of Ceremonies. He has taken great pride in doing his job with correctness and humor and authority. He had everything taken care of on our visits so that all went smoothly. I love you, my brother, and I know that you will excel and prosper in whatever you decide to do within the Masonic order. <clears throat> Lastly, I almost forgot about my wife. 
Lastly, to my wife, Winnie, I don't know how you put up with me, but you are strong and forthright. And I know that I have had your total support since 2013, when I became the Grandmaster for the first time. You have never left my side. <clears throat> and I know you make me look good when you accompany me to Grand Lodge or any other occasion. I truly thank you for that and love you dearly. In closing, I want to say that I wish that we could have finished our journey in Truro, where we could have had families, brothers from away, and friends attend our, our gathering and do the things that we do best in grand style. It could not happen for the second year in a row. I am convinced that next year, 2022, will be the year of recovery, and we will rise again. Again, I pledge my support to the incoming Grandmaster and his worthy team, and ask you all to do the same. Be well and stay well, my dear brothers. May the great architect bless us all. I'm shook up now. I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> um, oh, just, if you could just bear with me for a second, if I could see some numbers here. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Brethren, the time has come for the annual installation of officers of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And I will now call upon most worshipful brother, Jim Ludington to conduct the ceremony. Most worshipful brother Jim Ludington, will you assume the Grand East and conduct the ceremony of installation? Would be my pleasure, most worshipful Grandmaster. Right, worshipful Grand Director of Ceremonies. Most worshipful past Grandmaster. Would you present the Grandmaster elect? Most worshipful Grandmaster, I have the honor to present for installation. Right Worshipful Brother John Dollymont, who had been duly elected Grand Master of Masons in Nova Scotia for the ensuing year. My brother, the exalted station to which the free choice of your brethren have called you involves great responsibility and requires to be inaugurated with solemn sanctions. It elevates you to a position from which the power and the prerogative may depart with the expiration of your terms of service, but the honor and the dignity except by your own act, never. I will now call upon the Right Worshipful Grand Chaplain for prayer. Brother, and be in order for prayer. Bless now thy servant before thee, who is about to assume new and important relations to his brethren. Give him wisdom give him strength, give him love. Enable him so to rule in the best interests of the great brotherhood now to be committed to his church. Add thy blessing upon the brethren who are to be associated with him in office. May they have a just sense of their accountability to thee and to the fraternity. And may they ever be faithful and zealous and uphold the hands of their chief in all good deeds. 
we ask in thy presence. Amen. More to be. More to be. More to be. More to be. <laughs> Most worshipful Pasqua and Master, our distinguished brother is now prepared to assume his installation vows. Thank you. Grand Master elect, you will place both hands on the volume of the sacred law, say I, pronounce your several names in full, and repeat after me. Hello? I. John Raymond all about. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. Do promise and swear. Do promise and swear. That to the best of my ability. That to the best of my ability. I will perform the duties. I will perform the duties. Of Grand Master of Masons of Nova Scotia. Of Grand Master of Masons of Nova Scotia. And conform with and maintain. And conform with and maintain. The constitution and regulations. The constitution and regulations. Of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. Of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And the usages and customs. And the usages and customs. Of ancient free and accepted Masons. Of ancient free and accepted Masons. And at all times. And at all times. Enforce a strict obedience. Enforce a strict obedience. There too. There too. So help me God. So help me God. Most worshipful the Grand Master, by immemorial usage and the irrevocable landmarks of masonry, you have been invested as Grand Master of Masons with powers and prerogatives which are well nigh absolute. The interests of the craft for weal or woe are placed in your hands during your terms in office. The good resolutions, which I doubt not you have formed in your own mind, that these powers shall not be abused or perverted by you, I would gladly strengthen with the word of adumnation, which will not become me henceforth to utter. The very consciousness of great power will ever make a generous mind cautious and gentle in its exercise. To rule has been the lot of many and requires neither strength of intellect nor soundness of judgment. To rule well is the fortune of but few, and may well be the object of an honorable ambition. It is not by the strong arm or iron will that obedience and order, the chief requisites of good government are secured, but by holding the key to the hearts of the men. The office of Grand Master is one of great antiquity and respect, and one of the highest dignities to which we may aspire. Its incumbent to rule well must possess and practice several important requisites. As a man, he must be of approved integrity and irreproachable morals, freed from the dominion of hasty temper and ill-governed passions, of good repute in the world, and practicing as an example to the craft those cardinal virtues of fortitude, prudence, temperance, and justice. As a citizen, he should be loyal to the government and obedient to the laws prompt in the duties he owes to society and a pattern of fidelity in all social and domestic relations. As a Mason, he should cling to the old landmarks and be firmly opposed to their infringement, proficient in the laws, language, and literature of the fraternity, desirous to learn and apt to teach. Though for a time not a workman, yet master of the work and qualified to earn his wages, prompt to aid and relieve and slow to demand it. Ever mindful that though for a time he is elevated above his fellows, he is elevated by them and yet a craftsman, more sacredly bound by a craftsman's obligation that he should cultivate everywhere and at all times those golden tenets of brotherly love, relief and truth. As an officer, he should remember, first of all, he is an individual Mason, sharing in that respect a common lot with his brethren, and therefore interested in the welfare of each and all. Be devoid of undue ostentation and haughty bearing, accessible to all, cultivating the closest friendship 
and most unlimited confidence in his associate officers. Be eager to take counsel with his brethren and ready to give it. Be cautious in investigation and hearing. Be deliberate in judgment. Be prompt in execution. Be forbearing long and much with evil doers. Be ready to reward good. Be devoid of favoritism and wholly impartial. Be watchful over the treasury, having an eagle eye upon every portion of his jurisdiction and breasting over the restless spirit of innovation. Such are the important qualifications a Grand Master should possess and the leading errors which he should avoid. It may be that some of your predecessors have failed to reach this standard, but it is attainable. Let it be your purpose to reach it and be a bright and shining example for those who shall come after you. It now remains for me to clothe you symbolically in the external ins insignia of your rank and authority. It is with much pleasure. <laughs> I'll just hold up for a minute. It is with much pleasure that I symbolically present you with the collar and jewel of your office, whose striking, whose uh, striking, uh, no, excuse me, whose symbolic meaning will have a new and striking significance for you. I symbolically present you with the gavel, a potent emblem of Masonic authority, and in your hands should never be sounded in vain. I surrender you the seat of authority and render you this, the first act of homage due to you as Grand Master. I hail, salute, and proclaim you the most worshipful, the Grand Master of Masons in Nova Scotia. Brethren, behold your Grand Master. Brethren, behold your Grand Master. Brethren, behold your Grand Master. Okay. Most worshipful of the Grand Master, do you wish me to continue with the Grand Lodge installation? Most worshipful Grand, past Grand Master, uh, I haven't had appropriate preparation time in the last two minutes to get ready to, to do this myself. So I, therefore, I would seriously and I would hope that you will con continue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, merciful Grand Director Ceremonies. Most merciful past Grand Master. Would you present the Deputy Grand Master elect? Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, I have the honor to present for installation Right Worshipful Brother Alan Jarvis, who has been duly elected Deputy Grand Master for the ensuing year. Thank you. Deputy Grand Master elect, you will place both hands on the volume of the sacred law, say I, pronounce your several names in full, and repeat after me. I, Alan Delmer Jarvis. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. Promise and swear. Promise and swear. That to the best of my ability. That to the best of my ability. I will perform the duties. I will perform the duties. Of Deputy Grand Master of Masons in Nova Scotia. Of Deputy Grand Master of Masons in Nova Scotia. And that I will conform with. And I will conform with and maintain and maintain the constitution and regulations, the constitution and regulations of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia, of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia, and the usages and customs of ancient free and accepted Masons, and the usages and customs of the free Masons of Nova Scotia, of ancient free and accepted Masons, of ancient free and accepted Masons, and at all times. And at all times, enforce a strict obedience thereto. Enforce a strict obedience thereto. So help me God. So help me God. I will now call upon 
most worshipful brother, Dan Campbell, to deliver the charge to the Deputy Grandmaster. Right, worshipful brother Jarvis. You are aware that in the case of the incapacity of the worshipful, the most worshipful Grandmaster, in contingencies mentioned in the Constitution, you are to succeed in his duties and prerogatives, as you do also in acting as his substitute in any matters especially delegated to you. Your office, therefore, is one of great dignity and importance, and it was in view of these considerations that your brethren have selected you to fill it. Treasure up, therefore, the suggestions made to the most worshipful, the Grand Master, and remember that usage, as well as our particular regulations, have placed you in most intimate and confidential relations to him as supporter and counselor. You will now symbolically be invested with the jewel of your office. Hello. And I proclaim you Deputy Grand Master of Masons in Nova Scotia. A lot of feedback or something. <laughs> Okay, uh, Right Worshipful Grand Director Ceremonies. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master. Would you present the <laughs> Senior Grand Warden Elect? Most Worshipful Past Grand Master. I have the honor to present for installation Right Worshipful Brother Bob Robert Crowley, who has been duly elected Senior Grand Warden for the ensuing year. Uh, Grand Sen Senior Grand Warden Elect, you will place both hands on the volume of the sacred law, say I, pronounce your several names in full, and repeat after me. I, Robert James Cowley. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. Do promise and swear. Do promise and swear. That to the best of my ability. That to the best of my ability, I will perform the duties of Senior Grand Warden. That I will perform the duties of Senior Grand Warden. And that I will conform with. And that I will conform with. And maintain. And maintain. The Constitution and Regulations. The Constitution and Regulations. Of the Grand Lodge of Nova, Nova Scotia. Of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And the usages and customs. And the usages and customs. Of ancient free and accepted Masons of ancient free and accepted masons and at all times and that at all times enforce a strict obedience thereto and enforce a strict obedience thereto so help me god so help me god thank you i would now call upon uh, most worshipful brother george o'leary to deliver the charge to the senior grand warden right worshipful senior grand warden position which you occupy you're breaking up george Turn the video on. Right Worshipful Brother Senior Grand Warden, the position which you occupy in the Grand Lodge and among the fraternity is one of no little importance. In the Grand Lodge, you are to aid in the preservation of order and at all times render counsel and advice to the Grand Master. These are high and responsible duties requiring circumspection vigilance, and reflection. But when to these is added the more onerous labor, in conjunction with the junior grand warden, of Dylan Chile preserving the old ancient landmark throughout the jurisdiction, it then becomes a trust of deepest moment to the welfare of the crown. I now symbolically invest you with the jewel of your office, Thank you. And under normal circumstances, we'll present you with a certificate uh, 
to the position which you now hold. The grant will now be conducted to your station. Thank you. Okay. Uh, White Worshipful Grand Director Ceremonies. I'm uh, not hearing you. You're muted. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, I have the honor to present for installation. Right Worshipful Brother Rick Crawford, who has been duly elected Junior Grand Warden for the ensuing year. Thank you. Uh, all right. Junior Grand Warden elect. Uh, you will place both hands on the volume of the sacred law. Say I, pronounce your several names in full, and repeat after me. I, Ricky David Crawford. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. And the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. You promise and swear. Do promise and swear that to the best of my ability, that to the best of my ability, I will perform the duties of junior grand warden, that I will perform the duties of junior grand warden, and I will conform with, and that I will conform with, and maintain, and maintain the constitution and regulations of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia, the constitution and regulations of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia, and the usages and customs and the usages and customs of ancient free and accepted Masons of ancient free and accepted Masons and at all times and at all times enforce a strict obedience thereto and all times enforce a strict obedience thereto so help me God so help me God <clears throat> I will now call upon most worshipful brother Lauren Armstrong to deliver the charge to the uh, junior grand warden Right, Worshipful Brother, Junior Grand Warden, the duties of your office and the qualifications for it are almost identical with those of the Senior Grand Warden. I may, however, add to the charge given to that officer that you be equally vigilant and circumspect, not only at your station in the Grand Lodge, but in the broader field of action without and dividing with him his labor, taking due care that the great object of your united solicitude shall remain inviolate. Accept the jewel of your office and repair to the south, being ever watchful, whether at labor or refreshment, that the high twelve of observation does not find you without your work. Or, pardon me, does not find you with your work, and that the craft you superintend unperformed. You will now be take, symbolically take, conducted to your station in the South. Congratulations, Brother Rick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Most Worshipful Brother Armstrong. Right, Worshipful Grand Director of Ceremonies. Hello, I'm back. Most worse for past Grand Master. Would you assemble the District Deputy Grand Masters? Newly appointed District Deputy Grand Masters will please assemble virtually. Most worse for past Grand Master, I have the honor to present the newly appointed District Deputy Grand Masters for installation. Thank you. I will now call upon Most Worse for Brother Peter Ponsford to deliver the charge to the District Deputy Grand Masters. The district deputies are most important officers in the Grand Lodge. In your district, you are a representative of the Grand Master and are invested with a portion of his powers, duties and responsibilities. Upon you more than any other brother depends the harmony, prosperity and proper uh, regulation of the lodges. It is your duty to visit each lodge, inspect its mode of working, examine its 
bylaws. See that the records are being properly kept. Inquire if Grand Lodge returns and dues have been forwarded. Inquire if the hall is properly provided with furnishings and working tools. And make such presentations as your wisdom may suggest. It is moreover your duty to make your report to the Grand Master at the appropriate time. A duty which on any other time must be carried out without fail. Whether the other lodges have done their duty or not, do yours. Make an example to them of doing your duty promptly. Your duties can be successfully carried out only by constant care, labor, and study. Your selection is evidence of the good opinion entertained about your Masonic knowledge, your duty, your willingness to labor, your fidelity and your discretion. Enable to carry out your duties in such a manner that the confidence of Grand Lodge will not be misplaced. Worship, uh, <coughs> right, worshipful brethren, allow me to congratulate you and wish you a very successful year in office. Thank you, Most Worshipful Brother Ponsford. Uh, right Worshipful Grand Director of Ceremonies. Right, most Worshipful Past Grand Master. You will present the uh, <coughs> Grand Chaplain elect for installation, please. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, I have the honor to present <coughs> the newly appointed Grand Chaplain, Right Worshipful Brother Michael Lutz and virtually the newly appointed district grand chaplains. For uh, no, no district. No Thank district, you. aye, aye. Thank you. Uh, I'm now call upon right worshipful uh, brother Gary Patterson to deliver the charge to the grand chaplain. Right worshipful brother Michael Lutz, that holy book, which is the chart and textbook of your holy calling is also the great light of masonry and forever sheds its benign rays upon every lawful assemblage of ancient free and accepted masons. Teach us uh, from its life giving precepts, intercede for us and warn us by its lessons of infinite wisdom and truth. And you will have faithfully performed your sacred functions and fulfilled your important trust. You are now symbolically invested with the jewel of your office. Look well to your station. Thank you, Brother Patterson. Right Worshipful Grand Director of Ceremonies. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master. You will uh, present the appointed uh, new Grand Director of Ceremonies. Most worshipful past Grand Master, I have the honor to present the newly appointed Grand Director of Ceremonies, Right Worshipful Brother Donald Evans. And I would call upon you to uh, read the charge or to give the charge, deliver the charge to the uh, Grand Director of Ceremonies. Right Worshipful Brother Donald Evans, the duties of your office require energy, activity, and quickness of perception. The good order of the fraternity and its general assemblies and processions depends upon your care, skill, and assiduity. I now install you into office and invest you symbolically with your appropriate jewel. It denotes command as the adjutant, as the adjutant of the Grand or Dis Grand Master to whom you will be ever near at hand. 
to execute his orders. Congratulations. Thank you. Right Worshipful Grand Director of Ceremonies. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master. You will present the remainder of the Grand Lodge officers uh, for installation. Most Worshipful Past Grand Master, I have the honor to present the newly appointed Grand Lodge officers for installation. Thank you. I would now call upon Most Worshipful Brother Dan Campbell to charge the, uh, the remainder of the appointed officers. Right Worshipful and Very Worshipful Brethren, you are bound by duty and honor to be faithful to your trust, to support the dignity of your office on every occasion, and to exhibit by example the golden tenets of brotherly love, relief, and truth. Let no motive swerve you from your duty. The seal with which you perform the duties of your Grand Lodge office will be demonstrated by the conscientious and responsible manner in which they are carried out during your term of office. Thus, you will render yourself worthy of the honor which is now conferred upon you. Thank you most worshipful Brother Campbell. <laughs> Brethren, I declare the principal officers of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia duly installed into office for the ensuing year in ample form. The proclamation will be made in the south, west, and east. And I would call upon the Grand Director of Ceremonies to make that proclamation. From the South, by the order of the Pope most, most Worshipful, the past Grand Master, and by authority of the Most Worshipful, the Grand Lodge of Ancient, Free, and Accepted Masons of Nova Scotia, I pro proclaim its Grand Lodge officers have on this day duly installed in ample form. And from the West, by order of the Most Worshipful, past Grand Master, and by authority of the Most Worshipful, the Grand Lodge of Ancient, Free and Accepted Masons of Nova Scotia, I proclaim, proclaim that its Grand Officers have on this day been duly in installed in, ancient, in ample form. And in the East, by order, the Most Worshipful as Grand Master, and the authority of the Most Worshipful, the Grand Lodge of Ancient, Free and Accepted Masons of Nova Scotia, I proclaim that its grand officers have on this day duly installed in ample form. Thank you. Brethren, be in order for prayer. And I will call upon the grand chaplain for the prayer. Let us pray. Most holy and glorious Lord God, we thank you for the many blessings you love has bestowed upon us and for this wonderful opportunity to gather together. We thank you for blessing all of these officers who have been installed this day. We ask you to bless our Grand Lodge and all those who work in it. We ask your Heavenly Father to bless all those who are with us today and we ask that you continue to bless our beloved fraternity. Amen. No more to be. No more to be. be. No more to be. No be. <clears throat> Most worshipful of the Grand Master, this concludes the ceremony of installation of the elected and appointed officers of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia. I would like to take this opportunity, certainly, to congratulate you and wish you all the best for the ensuing year. And if there is anything that I can do at any time, feel free to call upon me. I would also like to thank all the, uh, the officers and the most worshipful brothers that helped me today with this installation. It would be my wish that we could have done this in person, but 
due to uh, factors that we could not help, it was unable to be done. But I do look forward in another year to be able to do this again in person. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity of doing the installation this afternoon. Thank you, Grandmaster. Thank you very much, most first of all, Grandmaster, past Grandmaster. Uh, before I move on, I just like to, there's a couple of points I'd like to make to the District Deputy Grandmasters, and I'll do that now oh, my while I remember. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, of course, for accepting one of the most important offices in Grand Lodge. And if you haven't already done so, and I noticed that some of you have, because I noticed that some of you did get invested with your callers today, but if you haven't already made arrangements with your predecessors to get your regalia, do that as, at your earliest possible convenience. Please ensure, of course, that your officers, your district deputy, your district grand directors of ceremonies and your grand chaplains are installed at your earliest opportunity. Here's an important note. Uh, the school of instruction that normally we would do in person will be held next Saturday, virtually, at starting at 9.30 a.m. So that's next Saturday, June the 12th, starting at 9.30 a.m. The link and the various and the information will be forwarded to you come Monday by the Grand Secretary. And I would uh, stress to you that that will include both you and, or you, your district, Grand Directors of Ceremony, and the Grand Chaplains as well. Okay, so all three of you, next Saturday, starting at 9.30, virtually. And of course, uh, I would urge you, don't sit and wait to get started in your new positions. Time <laughs> is rolling by, make use of it, establish your lines of, com of communication, and I look forward to working with you. And I guess at this point in time, I, the floor I'll, uh, is mine, I guess, and I'll, I'd like to take this opportunity to present some, a few thoughts to you relative to where I'm coming from, I guess, and where I'd like for us to be going. Most worst of all, past Grandmaster Grant, past Grandmasters, officers, and members of Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia, and I think we have a couple of ladies present as well. Thank you all for being present today. My most sincere thank you for the dedication and determination that you have shown in those challenging times. I know that you have been frustrated. I know that you have a fervent desire to return to Lodge. This has been an experience like no other. And the road to today has certainly been different from that expected, but we have witnessed an historical first, and I trust a unique event in this grand jurisdiction. The past year has created challenges that none of us could have predicted or expected. We still have a way to go, but this time will pass and we will be able to return to personal meetings. In the meantime, we need to continue following the directives of the off authorities. Trying to decide the contents of this address has not been easy. I hope to give you an insight into my Masonic philosophy and the direction I think we should be going. But with the ground constantly shifting under our feet over the last 15 months, it has been difficult to put concrete plans into place. However, I believe that there are positives to be had from this situation. We have developed new communication skills. We have become increasingly aware of the importance of maintaining contact. At no other time have we have been presented with such an opportunity to stop and reflect on who we are, where we came from, and whether we are going. We have been presented with an opportunity that can reap great benefits for us. The future will judge how well we have used that opportunity. Now, I have thought long and hard at what would be a theme for the year. And then one evening while attending the meeting of Hudson Lodge and listening to the senior deacon recount his visitation to a member 
who could no longer attend lodge. I realized that what I sought was being clearly expressed in front of me. As a result, the theme I have chosen for the year is make a difference. Make a difference. There are tasks to be, form, to be performed that will require all of us to be involved. And we have a responsibility to use our talents to make a difference in the lives of our fellow man. May I suggest that you can make a difference by faithfully attending your laws as often as possible. And don't forget the joy and satisfaction that visitations bring. Make a difference by lending assistance to the officers and committees of your laws. They've been there, done that, tried that, it won't work attitude, does little to strengthen your lodge and make it attractive to new members. Make a difference by encouraging absent members to become more involved. Pay them a visit, make a phone call, offer them a ride. Remember, that contact is very, very important. Make a difference by extending the right end of friendship to our newest members. Make sure that, that they are not neglected at a most crucial time. Make a difference by making a daily advancement in your own growth by utilizing the many sources of information available to us. Make a difference by being a good contributing member of your community. Make a difference by helping inform the public about what Freemasonry stands for. Make a difference by spending quality time with your parents, with your families. Make a difference by preparing a new slate as we reflect on our individual records and resolutions of the past and consider how we can make a new start and a clean slate and a fresh outlook. Brethren, there's been a large amount of effort expended on the development of a long range plan for this grand jurisdiction, which culminated in the adoption of a series of motions by the Board of General Purposes at its February 24, 2018 meeting. The majority of these motions stress the need for an improved educational program that would assist in the understanding of who we are and what we do. Now, nothing is to be gained by dwelling on negatives. My brothers, we are at a point where we have to look at the recommendations and decide what can be reasonably achieved in a reasonable period of time. As a grand laws, a couple, uh, two, two years ago, we adopted the basic definition as a working reference point for moving forward. And I know that all of you have probably seen and heard of it and read it, but I'm going to repeat it once again. Freemasonry is an organization of like men or like-minded men who accept a lifestyle based on a universal system of morality, dedicated to the self-improvement of its members and thereby contributing to a building of a better community. Now allow me to repeat what I consider to be an extremely important aspect for the future, dedicated to the self-improvement of its members. Dedicated to the self-improvement of its members. Now we have frequently heard the phrase, Freemasonry takes good men and makes them better. I would suggest that probably that is not within the powers of the fraternity to make men better. It is probably better argued that such alone rests with the individual. However, that does not relieve us of our responsibility to assist the members in the understanding of the nature of our institution and in utilizing the value of his teachings. We can and we should have a significant part to play in the sad improvement. For the new initiative, or the, no, I'm sorry, for the new initiative, 
the evening of his reception into the lodge should be remembered as one of the most positive experiences of his life. And by way of illustration, I'd like to share this memory of mine with you. One of my greatest memories over the years has been that of Worshipful Brother Shears. On that May evening in 1978, when I stood with him in the northwest corner of the lodge, and he presented the charge after initiation. A most beautiful piece of ritual that I've had a lasting impact on me. And then this method of presentation, I can still feel the tingles down running down my spine when I think of it. So every new Mason, I believe, is entitled to such an experience. Masonic research suggests that the key to understanding and improvement in Freemasonry, as in practically any other aspect of life, rests with a solid educational program. One as only to reflect on the programs we have offered to our members to realize that we sometimes fall a little short in the support and the direction provided. We sometimes seem to get caught up in the numbers game to determine our success and somehow we seem to think that we have to make the new petitioner a Mason in the shortest time as possible for whatever reason. And there has been many suggested. My brethren, the level of enthusiasm at this moment is very high among our members to return to labor. And it is my hope that in the days to come, there will be a challenging of that enthusiasm to the advancement of the accepted proposal of the long range plan which will aid and expand our programs to improve the perception that we hold of our institution and ultimately assist in an improved experience for all of us. Freemasonry has given me much, far more than I have given it in return. It has helped guide me in my life choices and has given me a strong belief in the basic goodness of my fellow man. I've tried to internalize the lessons of thought, and I love to peel away the layers of symbolism and try to gain insights into the hidden truths. And that has led me to a dream. And I know I've been accused of being a dreamer, but then I'm going to continue to dream because if I don't, I don't know where I will be going. And here's a dream that I have. A dream of a fraternity that has inspired members members so inspired as so as to make lodge meetings a priority and hence would never be inclined to demit. I dream of a fraternity that cultivates and improves, and improves the minds of its members, which would encourage more free thinking men to seek admission. I dream of a fraternity that does tremendous good for its communities and at the same time ensures that the good represented by the square and compasses is well known. Most worshipful brother, Grant. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my personal thank you to you for your contributions and dedication over the terms of your office. And I am sure but I speak for all the members of this jurisdiction in extending to you and Winnie every good wish. And we only pray that your future will be marked with peace, love, and good health. Most worship of Brother Ludington, thank you for the efforts that you have put in today, into today's activities. We have truly braved uncharted waters. And I know that you would have much preferred a normal installation. You set out to see that this ceremonial was done with as much dignity and decorum as possible under the circumstances. I believe that you have succeeded. Thank you sincerely. To the Grand Secretary, the Grand Treasurer, the Office Administrator, and the Office Secretary, thank you sincerely from all of us for your demonstrated dedication to the administrative concerns of this Grand Lodge. And I look forward to working with you over the coming year. 
Thank you to those of you who have so freely given your talents by coming forward to serve in the various Grand Lodge offices. I look forward to working with you, and I know that we can have a productive and rewarding year. To all the members of this grand jurisdiction, thank you for the encouragement and pledges of support that you have, prompt, have provided. I have one hope, and that is at the end of this term, I will not be found wanting. And finally, but by no means last, a thank you to my best friend and partner, Caroline. You have never wavered in your support and encouragement, and especially over this last 15 months. What you have endured over the years is truly worthy of sainthood. Thank you most sincerely, and I love you dearly. Brethren, in, conclu in conclusion, I would like, to us, like for us to return for a few moments to June the 21st, 1866 and reflect on the challenges our, prece our predecessors faced and overcame to create this grand jurisdiction. And I would like to borrow the words of our first grand master, most worshipful brother, William H. Davies. And I quote, let us now look upward and take courage. Let the ruling ambition of every master of a lodge be not who can show the largest role of membership, but who can boast of the best men, men who fully appreciate and live up to the principles of Masonic, of masonry, brotherly love, relief, growth. <clears throat> Remember, brethren, that our subordinate lodges will advance in numbers and usefulness as they advance in morality, and their strength and influence will depend more on their moral character and on their numbers. The conferring of degrees does not make masons. Knowledge of the sublime principles upon which masonry is founded, knowledge of its moral obligations which it enjoins, and the practical duties which it inculcates are absolutely requisite to form the true and accomplished mason." End of quote. It has been said that the mantle of leadership rests heavily on the shoulders of him who wears it. And after reflecting on the commitment and contributions of my predecessors, that point becomes very apparent. The craft in Nova Scotia has been well served since that meeting of June the 21st, 1866. And I now give you my commitment that I will do my utmost to devote my attention to the task at hand. Brethren, there is work to be done. But let us all with one accord move fully. And let us truly make a difference. Thank you very much, my brothers. Now, having said that, I, is there anything else that needs to be brought before this special communication before I proceed to close? There's nothing on is there my Anything that I've missed? Uh, there's nothing on my most worshipful grandmaster. I, I was coming to you in a moment, the most, most worshipful, or right worshipful grand, brother, grand secretary. I of what you say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I doubt very much your your desk is going to be clear for any for the immediate future. I doubt it too. If there's nothing else to be brought before this special communication, Brother Senior Grand Morden, how should Masons meet? Uh, upon the plum, most worshipful Grandmaster. This, let me ask you again, Brother Senior Grand Morden. How should meet Masons meet? On the square, most worship Grandmaster. 
Shall I give it another go? <laughs> no, I just want to... Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I certainly am. Uh, I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. But I think, uh, no, I think we meet up on a level, don't we? On the level, most worshipful grandmaster. <laughs> most worshipful brother, or right worshipful brother, Junior Grand Warden. How should they yeah. act? Upon the plum, the most worshipful grandmaster. And they should part up on the square. So should we, my brothers, ever meet, act, and part. Right worshipful brother, Grand Chaplain. Please lead us in the closing prayer. Let us pray. Great architect of the universe, accept our humble thanks for the many mercies and blessings thy bounty has conferred on us, and especially for this friendly and social time together. Pardon, we beseech thee, whatever thou hast seen amiss in us since we have been together, and continue to us thy presence, protection, and blessing. Make us sensible of the renewed obligations we are under to love thee. And as we are about to separate and return to our respective places of abode, wilt thou be pleased so to influence our hearts and minds that each one of us may practice out of the lodge those great moral duties which are inculcated in it, and with reverence study and obey the laws which thou hast given us in thy holy word. Amen. So more to me. More to me. May the blessings of heaven rest upon us and all regular masons. May brotherly love prevail and every moral and social virtue submit us. Most worshipful, immediate past Grand Master, will you please close the great lights? The labors of this special convocation be concluded. Nothing now remains but to close the volume of the sacred law, thereby locking up the secrets of Freemasonry in the safe repository of a true and faithful breast, accompanied by the words, fidelity, 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 fidelity. And may God be with us all. Amen. So more to be. In the name of God and in the memory of the Holy St. John, I declare this 156 special communication of the Grand Lodge of Nova Scotia closed in ample form.